this has been a long time coming. Four years coming. It was 2018 that we saw the release of a Lego set. Told me kind of exactly how Fallen Kingdom was going to end. Here we are at the precipice of Dominion. And are we about to see the same thing from Lego? Are they about to give away the ending to Jurassic World Dominion? There's only one way to find out, and that is to see a beautiful little someone. <laughs> ah! Here it is! And wow, does it show us quite a lot. <laughs> I can't speak today. So, when Jurassic World Dominion was first shown, I was kind of curious as to what they could do for, you know, the big Lego set. Because there's always one really big one. Uh, in the first movie, it was in the, the Lego set with Indominus Rex and the Breakout. In the second movie, you had Lockwood Manor, which was this huge thing and it had a little bit in the museum. It was quite interesting. And this time, after seeing you know, the Biosyn facility, this big, you know, circle thing, I was thinking maybe, you know, we're going to get something that's, you know, like a huge segment of that. And then you flip it around and you have the labs and stuff like that and other things. A bit like the Lockwood Manor. However, this time we see, what do we see? We see the Giga, we see the Therizinosaurus. We have the helicopter. We have the um, this tower that we've seen in so much of the promotion in that Kaplunk game, and everywhere we see the uh, the Giga, we see this tower. Isn't that right, Whitney? Uh, but we also have what seems to be like a little bit of a lab, which I'm assuming is the inside. The horn, like a little bit of a higher horn on this one, uh, but they've definitely done more with the back. I'm pretty sure the, the Indominus Lego didn't have that one. And we also have a Therizinosaurus, which for some odd reason is sporting sickle claws. So we also have Alan Grant, Ellie Sattler, Owen Grady, Claire Deering, Kayla Watts, and Dr. Henry Wu. Let's have a look at the back of the box. And I think that's how Alan Grant gets into the place. Owen Grady, maybe tampering with a bit of the satellite communication. We got Dr. Henry Wu, you know, with his panted amber wall right there behind him. Uh, you got Sam Neill stealing some amber. Ellie Sattler, I thought it was a magnifying glass. And you've got other little action features that this does. So you, there you go, you've got Alan Grant uh, nicking an egg. Eggs. Henry Wu looking at his amazing giga. And then this, which tells a little bit of what's going to happen, which shows it being destroyed by the giga. Bitten into the facility or the viewing platform. Now to start one of the most daunting things to do with Lego. As building it and taking it out of the box. But before we do, look, there's a cool little giga. And every sort of Lego set that comes out with this has a different dinosaur there. And this one, of course, is the Giga, because I think this is the only one that comes with it, as well as, of course, Giga being in the top there. Obviously promoting, you have to buy all of the Lego sets in order to collect all the dinosaurs, because that's what the kids want. And if you are anything like me and you know how much these sets go for in a couple of years' time, even just the Giga itself could go for like 100 quid. Just by itself, it's ridiculous. Anyway, Let's try and get out of the box, shall we? It doesn't seem like it's going to be too bad because there's a lot I, I've made in the past. I've made a lot of Lego sets and this one definitely seems to be one of the, the quicker ones to make. There's a, there's a lot less going on with this one. However, I could be wrong. It's not so bad. <laughs> wow! All right, bag one. Okay. Bag five, and then the Thera, and then the Giga. Bag three, bag two, bag four, bag two again. We got two twos, we got two twos. Bag four again, and bag three. And as well as that, you've got one big handy dandy booklet with stickers and of course instructions to help you build the bucket. Get it away! That's where I'm sitting! Oi! Right, so obviously I can't do this by myself. We've enlisted Whitney to help me. Well, I can do it by myself, but it'll take twice as long if I did that. Oh my god, Giga's really big. Jesus, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> So 
So, two hours and 20 minutes later, it is completed. Why are we still here? So that is the Giganotosaurus and Therizonos attack, or is a battle a th attack complete? I don't even know how much longer it was in comparison to other ones, but it felt to me a lot shorter. I don't know. It was the first time Whitney had ever worked with Legos. How did you find it, Whitney? It was fun. However, we're in a time crunch, so it's pretty much like, no, put that there. Or put that there. Or put that there. So how about we take a look at, you know, the, the main thing that the kids want out of this set. This being the dinosaurs. So this is the Giga. Oh, there, there it is. It wasn't in properly, I was gonna say. So if you're familiar when it, with the dinosaurs, or at least Indominus Rex, when it comes to the Lego series, it's pretty much the same. I think they've added a little bit of extra uh, spines on the top of it. They've also added some extra spikes on the top of the head. You've got these joint mechanisms, I don't know what you'd call them, uh, that really help out uh, stop motion animation. Because I've seen some really good ones with, when it comes to the Lego stuff. So if you're really wanting to go into something like that, you can get some kind of smooth animation frames there. But what they've really highlighted in this one is just the amount of scars that are running up its side. and or it Basically all over. It is covered in these scars. Especially when we look at the laboratory, it's sort of like battling. Camp Cretaceous season four, I think it was. You had dinosaurs fighting each other you, and like some sort of control chip in the head to sort of, you know, with season five, I think it's pretty much, oh, you, they, you can control the dinosaur and make a fight for you sort of thing. And if we have a look in here, when he gets a lovely close-up of the laboratory, and I'll, I'll move the Giga out of the way there. There it is, beautiful. <laughs> you can see the Giga and the Therizinosaurus like display sheets. So it kind of feels like he's pitting these two against each other. I don't know, I don't really know what the purpose of, would be apart from entertainment, if I'm gonna be honest. That was something that was in Camp Cretaceous season four, was this uh, statistics and screens and health bars and all this jazz. You've got a little bit of the eggs as well that opens up and closes, which is pretty cool. You've also got this like robotic arm that is supposed to, you know, work on the amber DNA or something like that. As well as this is pretty cool. So this is the outside of the facility and you've got this, this camera here, it's facing the other way, I'll turn it around. There you go. So, oh, and it's full enough. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you can easily, you can easily, I forgot it doesn't go up and down, it's left and right. So that little camera is looking out to the entrance here. And you've got this little Jeep, which comes with an Allen Grand and a pickaxe, as well as a block of amber, which actually does have a mosquito printed on it that you didn't have to stick on yourself. And I think that would just sort of go in here. That's obviously where you've got like the little breakers. There's a whip here. It's like they're trying to train these dinosaurs or control the dinosaurs or, or whip them into shape. <laughs> then we've got this thing, the observation towery thingy me bobby. Probably one of the easiest ones to construct. What's kind of cool about this one is you've got these railings on the side that you could of course lower or, or bring up. And then at the front, this is where ooh, we have some action that's gonna happen. You've got a thing that you pull out. And then when you pull out, like I've done, I think it's supposed to fall away. Now, I don't know whether I've, I've obviously built it too well, I don't know. Um, but you have to tap it a little bit so we can bring the Giga. Yeah, and it falls down. Eat the people inside, yum, yum, yum. So that's pretty decent. Actually, before we, before we go off any further, this thing, yes. Uh, I was wondering, because it's got a helipad on the top, and of course we'll talk about the helicopter in a second, but it's got these little angled bits, and I was thinking to myself, why, why even bother having, you know, why not just make it flat, but actually, if you put the helicopter on top, um, it perfectly sits, and because it's got those, you know, uh, edges that are higher, it can kind of sit in there comfortably. Now, let's talk about the helicopter, yes! Where we've got Kayla, uh, flying said helicopter. You've got the turbines here, as well as the little, uh, little one on the back as well. It's really cool. Too many things in the way. So an interesting thing about this as well is these. So these really don't do much. <laughs> I don't think they're supposed to be wings. And speaking of helicopters, we got one passing over us right now. Woo! 
So I think they're supposed to, you know, attach to it. I don't think there was any other way they could have made that work. But you've got these, I thought maybe you'd, you'd be like the Masrani helicopter. You would have had, you know, be able to put, fit multiple people in. I think we've seen Alan Grant look out the side of this helicopter. Um, but if you lift up, you can lift up from either side, I think. Um, and then if you pull out here, you've got supplies. Don't exactly know what that is, but you've got some sort of uh, like a dot, you've got a light, and you've got a lever. I mean, we'll have a look at the characters. Let's get them all, because there are actually quite a few that come with this set. There he is, with a bit of grey beard. Of course, the classic blue top. Uh, no alternate head, unfortunately, for Alan Grant. But there he is, back again after so long. And how about... We now look, if I can do this quickly without it, you know, losing focus. Oh, <laughs> Sadler. Um, no pink uh, top this time, unfortunately. Alan Grant keeps his blue, Ellie Sadler doesn't. She does have multiple heads though, because you can kind of cover uh, one of the heads with the hair. Uh, next, we have Uber, Claire Deering, who also has two heads. Seems like if you've got hair that covers your back, then you're all good. And then next we have Kayla, the pilot. Next we have Owen Grady. And finally, uh, Dr. Wu sporting a, a kind of a, a, an interesting haircut, especially seeing as we've, you know, we know what uh, Dr. Wu looks like in the new movie. Really, a hairstyle like that, really. I don't know why we've decided to not give him it because it's pretty much the same. Stubble leg going on. Does he have multiple faces? He does have multiple faces. So is it just Alan Grant? Does Owen Grady have multiple? Oh, and Grady has also multiple faces. So you can't tell me Alan Grant. No, Alan Grant literally just only has one face. And finally, before we close out this video, of course, the Thera freaking Zina Dina Dinosaurus. So, Thera Zinosaurus, not a dinosaur. I would have thought Lego would have had a sculpt to fit, um, but they've kind of done an all right job. It's just a bit weird when it comes to the feet. For whatever reason, again, we have the sickle claw. I think I mentioned that before we are uh, on the box art, but no, yes, it is on the actual thing. Um, and also the claws themselves are very interesting, um, but they do kind of move up and down though. So you can, do that which is interesting because it is just bending the claw itself the head has a little bit of articulation as well i mean as far as the giga goes it doesn't look half as good it looks very smooth it's not really that feathery i mean the only thing that kind of give the indication of feathers is the red painting along its body and neck but apart from that, I mean, it's, it's solid effort, see? <laughs> giga i mean from its head there it looks quite wide but if you turn it around it's, it's on like diet pills. It's so thin. I don't know whether that's because it's supposed to be thin or whether that's just, you know, the mold that they're using and maybe that's the same as what Indominus Rex was. Um, but his head is like... Chunky. Well, I think now we can kind of compare this set to its predecessors, that being the Indominus Rex breakout set and then the Lockwood Manor breakout set as well. I was a real fan of the Indominus Rex breakout set, the 2015 one, because it was an enclosure and it didn't matter you know, if you didn't have Indominus Rex, you could put any dinosaur in there. However, if my memory serves me correctly, you only got Indominus Rex with that set. Uh, the next one with Lockwood Manor, you got Indoraptor and you also got Blue. So it's kind of all right. And with this one, you get the titular antagonist and possibly an antagonist there is an Asaurus. It might not be. I feel like it's going to be a good guy and it's going to help at some point. As well as, you know, two unique dinosaurs. One unique that I don't think has ever been released with the Lego set or Jurassic World. Um, you've got a watchtower, which in itself could have been a set. You've got a helicopter, which again, in itself, could have been a set. You know, a, a cheaper set, but still could have been. And then you've got like one, two, three, four, five, six characters. Another little mini vehicle. You know, you could have just put that, and that would have been a set. You could have put that, and then that being a set. And then you could have, I mean, it would have been very cheeky to have done it, but you could have done two Lego characters, and then these two as a set. I kind of like Lockwood Manor just because it was this big thing. However, you know, there were like very small rooms that were supposed to just be one place. You had the museum and then you had the bedroom. There's little scenes throughout the movie. And I think we're going to have it here, especially when they enter the building and then take in the egg or amber sample or something like that, especially with Dr. Wu. It's got, it's the best one I think that they've released because I, I have got the other ones and we'll do those later. But I'm going to say it's a, it's a solid eight, eight or nine. I can't, of course, we can't give anything a 10. Nothing's ever perfect, is it? You can always do with some improving. 
but an 8 or a 9. I, I'll say 8.5, 8.5. I'd say it's on par with the Lockwood Manor, which gave you Indoraptor and also Blue. Just because you've got a vehicle, you've got this, you've got the lab, you've got so many different things here that you know, you don't have to use all of it at once. You'd be like, oh, well, let's use the helicopter for a little thing. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like and also let me know your comments down below. Is this the best set? Is this one that you've got? Are you looking forward to getting? Let me know. I'm always interested to hear what you have to say. And until next time, I'll see you later. Oh, bye-bye.